This is another little thing. It's a plastic ring that's designed to float in liquid, and as you can see, hopefully, it atomizes the liquid and forms a sort of mist. Um, and it's designed to supposedly humidify your room or to um, put aroma into the air or whatever. And it's powered from a USB power source. This is just a little portable USB power source, but it's designed to supposedly plug into your computer. So I'm going to unplug it and take it to bits and see how it works. So this is going to be rather wet and messy. Oh dear. Yeah, this is going to be very wet and messy. I should have got paper towels or something. Oh well. Lack of foresight. Oh, there we go. Okay, so what's inside it? Three screws in the bottom. And the case pops apart. Round circuit board and a little transducer on the bottom. The transducer is a piezoelectric disc um, with a sort of ring of uh, piezoelectric material around it. It's, it's actually a sort of, uh, what's the best way to describe this? It's, I think it's stainless steel, not 100% sure. Although it's got a solder joint in it, so I'm not 100% sure. But um, it's got a pattern of holes in it. I'll show you, show you afterwards. But it's sandwiched in a little silicon ring to make it watertight. And the circuit board um, has a, not many components on it. It's got a 16 megahertz crystal, it's got a little transformer, uh, a series inductor, and the electrolytic capacitor on the back. It's got a transistor, um, a MOSFET, a uh, chip, and just uh, some support components. It's got a little um, decoupling capacitor and two little tiny capacitors for the crystal. So, to elaborate on how it works, I shall move that out of the way and bring up the schematic because I took it to bits. So, mystery chip because it's had the number rubbed off it. So that's the USB supply coming in. You've got the um, electrolytic capacitor here, 16 megafarad, 220, um, 220 megafarad, 16 volt. Uh, I'm guessing this is 100 nano, it's not marked, um, and because it's in parallel with this capacitor, I can't really test it, but it's a decoupling capacitor mounted close to Mystery Chip. Mystery Chip has, because um, it's got the numbers scrubbed off it, has a crystal, uh, the 16 megahertz crystal and the two um, capacitors associated with that, and then directly drives a transistor, an LR024N transistor, and then there's a transformer, and the transformer, it's quite odd that they've coupled the secondary here. I'm guessing it steps the voltage up to drive the uh, piezoelectric disc a lot harder than, than they could from the 5 volt alone. Um, but it's quite odd that this coil is connected to the drain of the MOSFET as opposed to maybe being connected directly to, to zero volts. I'm not sure why they do that. Anyway, <coughs> because uh, I, I really haven't a clue why they did that. I thought they'd have just connected it straight down to the zero volt rail. So anyway, after that it goes through another inductor, series inductor. I'm guessing this is all just designed to peak the voltage as high as possible to get the maximum disc excursion, and then you get the piezoelectric misting disc. The disc itself is the metal disc, the ring of piezoelectric material, and then a pattern of very fine holes punched through in the middle, punched or etched, and maybe I'm guessing etched in this situation. And that, uh, it's the ultrasonic pulsing of that disc that must force the water through those holes and then atomize it off the surface into the mist. Mystery chip, I'm guessing, is going to be a PIC-12 microcontroller because, coincidentally, the pins that are connected to positive are the ones that would be the positive supply pin in the PIC microcontroller and the memory clear pin, which uh, is active low, so that would normally be tied high if you, if you weren't really using it, um, although you can in some chips disable that as being memory cl uh, clear and use it as an auxiliary input. The oscillator for the crystal, it just so happens that the same pins are used, oscillator 1 and oscillator 2, and that leaves the negative which is matches and one of the outputs which actually OS1 and OS2 can also be used as inputs and outputs on the PIC microcontroller and all these three pins can be used as outputs. But in this case one of them is being used to drive the um, MOSFET, which is a 
it's not a logic level MOSFET, which is quite odd. I thought it would have been, but having said that, it's got quite a, a low on resistance and it's got such a high voltage and current rating and so on. It, it's just, you know, it, it's, it's fine for the job and it obviously does does it. So it's, it's a neat wee circuit. Um, I'm surprised at the use of a microcontroller. I suppose ultimately that lets them, using software, it lets them fine tune the on off ratio, the, the frequency. Um, they probably just optimised the mark space ratio of the drive signal and the frequency of it um, in a very simple bit of machine code, um, just a repeating loop, and that's what they've used to drive it. So not that complicated, but it works very well.